Hey what's going on guys, this is Kincaid from Push and today I'm going to teach you how to do a backside 360 on your snowboard. This is a trick that you'll learn pretty early on into your freestyle progression and once you get them dialed you can do them with tons of different grabs, float them out on big jumps, or start doing them off of rails, clips, and other fun spots. There are a couple things you're going to want to know how to do before you try a backside 360. First of all, you're going to want to have your S-carves dialed in. The S-carve is the setup carve you take into the jump so that you take off straight and don't pre-spin your rotation or get off axis. I would also recommend knowing how to frontside 180 or backside 180. Even though you are spinning backside in this, the frontside 180 can help just for body awareness. A lot of riders think the backside 180 is harder than the backside 360 because you land blind, so it's not necessarily a prerequisite to this trick. But the backside 360 does tie a backside 180 and a switch frontside 180 together into one trick. As with most tricks you'll learn early on into your freestyle progression, the difficulty of this trick is not the technical part, but the commitment part. When you first start to learn, it might be scary to keep that rotation and keep your head turned all the way until you see the landing, but the good thing about the backside 360 is you do see your landing super early on, about halfway through the rotation actually. You can spot the landing, and then you can decide if you need to speed up the rotation a little bit or slow it down to put the landing gears out and stomp this trick clean. So with all that being said, let's get into it and discuss the step-by-step -step instructions to get this trick done. Like I said, you're going to approach the jump with a backside s carp. This means that you'll approach on your heels from either side, and then as you get into the jump, you're going to carve towards the jump and then alternate to your toes so that you're taking off completely straight off the jump on your toes. The goal is to not pre-spin at all or be taking off the jump at an angle. As you leave the lip of the jump, you're going to take your leading arm and shoulder and throw towards your takeoff back up the mountain. One thing to focus on is to keep your body completely upright. A lot of people tend to throw a little bit down, which gets you a little bit corked, and it makes it really hard to land this trick, and it'll make you land very tail heavy and wash out onto your tail onto your butt. So as you turn your shoulders and your body straight up and down, your head is going to be turned that same way. And like I said, at about the halfway mark, you're going to spot your landing. The awesome thing about the backside 360 is if you're spinning too slow, you can finish the last half of the rotation with your legs. If you take a look at this clip from me at Mount Hood, I was spinning a little bit too slow on that jump, and then about the halfway mark, I spot my landing and notice I need to speed it up a little bit, and I just whip my legs around to stomp the trick clean. Since you can spot this trick, it makes it very, very comfortable, and as long as you commit to getting that first half around, the second half is super easy. When it's time to put it down, I find it easiest to land this trick flat based and maybe a little bit on your tail. So I think that pretty much sums up the basic steps to this trick. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. Once you get comfortable with this trick, you can start throwing in tons of different grabs and a lot of variations as well as learning it off of rails. When first learning to grab, there are three grabs that I would recommend. One is mute, which is your front hand between the bindings on your front edge. If you do mute, just focus on keeping yourself upright before you grab. If you throw straight to mute right off the takeoff, you are going to cork this out. That's a really fun thing to do if you're going back cork five, but it's really hard to land if you're only going to 360. So make sure you wait a second till you get that grab until you have that rotation set. The second one is tail, which in my opinion is a little bit harder than mute, but again, you just want to be patient before you get the grab. Set that rotation and then reach back for it. The third one, which is probably my favorite and go-to would be stale fish, which is going to be your back hand on your back edge between the bindings. I feel like your hand can naturally flow that way with the way this rotation sets you. So again, once you take off and set that rotation, just reach that hand around and it's going to follow the way you're spinning. Once you have these totally locked in, I would also recommend throwing a shifty in there. It's a super, super fun feeling trick. And then you can also learn shifty back fives and shifty back sevens. Well guys, I think that pretty much sums this tutorial up. I hope it was helpful and thanks for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, I would highly recommend heading over to the website, pushtolimit.com, to check out a ton of other tutorials as well as a detailed write-up of this tutorial and other tricks. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll be back soon with more videos for you.